Summer was nearing, sixth grade was coming to an end, and I was still the undisputed badass of Christian elementary school. <laughs> Back then, most of my friends went to public school, so I was hip to the latest cuss words and slang, which earned me mad respect on the playground from my sheltered Christian classmates. I was also the only kid to get into not one, but three fights without being expelled. Then when recess, my undefeated record came crashing to an end. <laughs> it started with Daniel Crisatelli shanking a football kick that hit a spoiled fifth grader in the head named Aaron Hyman. Aaron scooped up the ball and kicked it into the kindergarten playground. I ran behind him and put him in a full Nelson. Listen here, you little shit. You get our ball right now, I'm going to put you to sleep. Aaron didn't say a word. He just lifted a clenched fist into the air and swung it straight down and smashed my left nut against my inner thigh. I quickly let him go. My nuts slithered into my stomach. I almost dropped to my knees. I hobbled after him yelling, I'm gonna pound your face in. You're dead, you hear me? Dead. As I walked to the lunch tables, my entire lower body was numb, and I felt my left testicle inflating fast. I was sure it was going to pop. I strutted over to Aaron's table and tried to redeem my badass image by knocking his hat off and filling his, or knocking his hat off and filling with chocolate milk. But I knew nothing could compare to the damage he had done. If we were fighting a war, Aaron had just dropped a nuke right onto the capital of my crotch. I went to the bathroom to assess the damage. I stood at a urinal and unzipped my pants. I almost fainted. I held the divider to keep from falling over. My left nut was now the size of a full-grown avocado. <laughs> my once wrinkled sack now looked like it was in its third trimester and about to give birth. <clears throat> I zipped myself up and walked towards the nurse's office. On the way, I debated whether to tell her I got hit in the nut or the testicle. <laughs> God, I hope she doesn't ask to look at it. I opened the door. The chalky-faced nurse looked up from her desk. Miss Tyler, um, I had an accident on the football field today. I need to go home. Okay, what, what kind of accident? Are, are you bleeding? Did you break something? Um, no, not, not really. I think, uh, my ball exploded. <laughs> she raised an eyebrow. What do you mean your ball exploded? Like, football? No, no, um, I put Aaron Hyman in a headlock and he punched me in the left testy. It, it's swollen, I mean, it's huge. I need to go home. <laughs> oh, well... I'll call your mother right away. You want an ice pack? I sat there, eyes closed, a blue polar bear ice pack pressed to my crotch <laughs> as teachers and school staff passed me by. My mom picked me up an hour later. So you got punched in the balls, huh? <laughs> you need to go to the hospital? <laughs> my mom said as she buckled her seatbelt. I don't know. I looked out the window. I just want to go home. When we got back to the house, I locked myself in the bathroom and dropped my drawers and stared ho horrified at my sack in the mirror. <laughs> my mom pounded on the door. Patrick, open this door right now and let me see it. I need to know if you should see a doctor. Go away, Mom. I'm not showing you my freaking balls, okay? Patrick, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> you unlock this door or you're grounded. I put my boxers on, unlocked the door, and let her in. Well, let me see it. <laughs> my mom adjusted her glasses at the tip of her nose. If the pain wasn't bad enough, now I had to let my own mother inspect my goods. <laughs> the situation felt so wrong. I slowly reached down and lowered my tender gourd out the bottom of my boxers. 
careful not to reveal my shriveled third arm. <laughs> she bent down, squinted, and jumped back. Oh, dear God! <laughs> I quickly covered myself. See, that's what I want to show you, Mom. It's just really swollen, that's all. Swollen? Patrick, that thing could burst any second. Get in the car. I'm taking you to the ER. We entered the hospital, and my mom pulled me toward the check-in counter. A clerk in a purple sweater asked what brought me to the emergency room. I stared at the ground with my hands in my pockets. Well, go on. Tell her. My mom elbowed me in the ribs. I let out a deep breath. I got punched in the nuts, and now the left one is really swollen. I mean, I can feel my heart beating in it. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm sure. Can you show me with your hands about how swollen you would say it is? The clerk said. Are you serious? Patrick, you need to cooperate here. My mom shaped her hands into a big oval. I'd say it's about the size of an ostrich egg. <laughs> a nurse took, me, <laughs> took my mom and me into a room. A gray-haired doctor walked in shortly after. Hello, Patrick. Hi, my name is Dr. Look. <laughs> we shook hands. She, sh she sat on a spinning stool and peered down at her clipboard. So I see you received a blow to the scrotum and may have ruptured a testicle. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by ruptured, but yeah, it hurts. Okay, well, go ahead and remove your pants so I can take a look. <laughs> Horrible joke. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Mom, can you wait outside? This is weird enough without you in the room. I unbuttoned my shorts. Oh, calm down. I'll just turn my head. She faced the wall. I know this must be terribly uncomfortable for you, but don't worry, I'm a doctor and very familiar with the male anatomy. <laughs> yeah, I bet you are, you old meat gazer. <laughs> I thought as I slid my boxers to the floor. Okay, so you're gonna feel a little pressure. She snapped on some latex gloves. Let me know if it hurts. She cut my scrotum and squeezed. Okay, yeah, yeah, it hurts, it hurts. I cringed and crackled on the white wax paper. Okay, okay, just relax and breathe. She brought her face closer to my package. She continued to squeeze, I continued to squirm. <laughs> I gritted my teeth and thought about all the terrible things I was gonna do to Aaron Hyman when I got back to school. It's hard to believe a punch caused that much trauma. He must have hit you just right. <laughs> she informed me they were going to have to perform an a scrotal ultrasonographic evaluation. <laughs> a what, I asked? You know the little thingy they put on pregnant mommies to see the baby inside? Yeah. Well, it's basically the same thing, except we'll be using it to look inside your testicle. It was late into the night when my mom and I entered the ultrasound center. I was just nodding off when a gorgeous young brunette greeted us with a big smile and even bigger boobs. Hello, are you Patrick, she asked. I nodded. Please don't let this be her. Please don't let this be her. Great. My name is Kimberly. I'll be your ultrasound technologist tonight. I tried to force a smile. Jesus Christ, I thought. Are there seriously no male doctors in this place? <laughs> this time, <laughs> this time, I insisted my mom wait outside before Kimberly and I entered a dark room. I slipped into a hospital gown and lay on an examining table. She covered my acorn-sized penis with a damp towel. I had dreamt of laying naked next to a beautiful woman, my package in her hand, but I never imagined it'd be anything quite like this. <laughs> she scooped up a handful of warm gel from a bottle and began lathering my testes. <laughs> Besides the doctor, 
She was the first girl to ever touch my balls. <laughs> she was gentle, and it, it actually felt good. <laughs> so good that my little acorn sprouted up. <laughs> and the towel on my crotch turned into a teepee. <laughs> I sunk my teeth into my lip and tried to Im imagine as many anti-boner images possible. <laughs> I thought of my dad's rotten toenails, pimple pus, and the time I walked in on my parents humping doggy style. <laughs> Until the little tent finally laid flat. She pulled out what looked like a detachable shower head and pressed it on my balls. A glowing gray orb of spaghetti appeared on the screen. My ball had been reduced to a clump of pasta. <laughs> she delicately walked the shower head over every wrinkle and curly cue on my bulbous sack. When she finished, she wiped me clean and sent me on my way with a smile and a handshake. I felt like a used whore. <laughs> After reviewing the ultrasound results, the doctor said that my testicle was indeed ruptured and required immediate surgery. The, op the operation involved sticking a tube into my nut and draining the hemorrhage. The next day, when I awoke from the surgery, my nuts were wrapped up like a newborn. After the bandages were removed, I took a look at my balls in the mirror. It was monstrous. It looked like something that belonged in a bell tower. When I returned to school, word had spread, and my friends had been busy working up great nicknames to greet me with, such as King Plumnut, Busted Balls, Quasi Scroto, Lump Nasty, and of course, the swollen one. <laughs> At first, I was insecure of my lumpy nut. It wasn't until a high school physical that I grew more comfortable with it. The doctor finished most of my routine checkup, and I feared the upcoming testicle check. When he finally cut my nuts and told me to cough, I said, in case you haven't noticed, my left, my left nut is kind of busted. He gazed at it close and gave it a firm squeeze as if trying to determine if it was ripe. <clears throat> he looked up with a smile. Hey, it don't look half bad for a busted testicle. <laughs> Believe me, I've seen my fair share and it really don't look that bad. <laughs> the doctor's encouraging words helped me to embrace my nut. <laughs> By the time I was out of high school, I was more than willing to tell its story. My friends speculate about its appearance as if it were Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> and I really wouldn't have a problem showing them, but there's something beautiful about its mystery, <laughs> like a wrapped gift under a Christmas tree. <laughs> when people ask what it looks like now, I just laugh and say, well, you can hardly tell the difference when it's cold, when it's hot in the shower, or warm and hanging loose. Kind of looks like a sack of peas. <laughs> the only time I feel self-conscious about it now is on that rare occasion I'm naked with a girl. I always feel the need to explain that I don't have testicular cancer, but I've yet to mention it. I just let them grope or gawk at it and think to themselves, hmm, Something's not right here. I wonder if I should say something. <laughs> but they never do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Patrick Johnson, ladies and gentlemen.